do is, first of all, pose a question that we're raising today here in terms of, you know, would you say there's no room at the table? And why is inclusion so important for black British writers? I wouldn't go as far as to say that there's no room at the table at all. Okay. But, but I think it's a little corner. You know, maybe we're, we're, we're perched on the end somewhat, you know? And I think, um, I'm not, I'm not quite, quite sure why that is. I've been battling with why that might be. And I haven't come to any conclusion. But I just know that it's very apparent. It's very obvious. You know, if you look at the literary landscape as a whole, it's very obvious that people are being uh, published and are maybe not given the same accolades that other people are given for writing, let's say, similar books. You know? um, and, and it's not, I mean, I just want to say, you know, just in relation to what you said earlier, it's actually not about being disparaging about anybody. I, I really don't want to be disparaging about anyone, anybody. Uh, I'm interested in writing my books and getting on with things and, you know, largely, it, it, well, you know, entirely, it's all love, really. You know? I mean, I don't really, you know, I'm not here, you know, I, I want to dispel any kind of, like, angry black men mix, you know? I mean, it's just... It's just, it's just equality. It's just, it's just what's fair, really. And 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 when I see gross inequality um, on, 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 on terms of you know sexuality, uh, gender, and race, uh, I feel it's my duty as a writer to oppose that. Jonathan, um, again, related to the question, uh, how how do you think that relates to the work that you do? Um, well, we do, we do quite a wide range of work at English. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to get the country life thing sort of off, <laughs> off the table. But it's a very long time ago. It was a very short article. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and it, it was actually about Nepal. So, uh, and it wasn't about Wiltshire. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a black British author, obviously. And I think there's an issue where I, I feel sitting up here, I almost need to sort of get that off my chest because there's a sense of am I allowed to be part of this debate, you know, not, not, not being black? I mean, of course, you're saying you don't want to be sort of up there as angry black man, is that sort of stereotype you don't want to be in. I don't want to be sort of like white man coming in from a certain perspective of being boxed into that or white woman for that matter or any kind. So, um, so um, the point is really, um, to say, you know, I'm a, but I, I do write, you know, I'm, I'm a writer, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to write. I'm not a published author. And if I think back to my early experiences of trying to get a book that I wrote about eight or nine years ago published, and the way that got, um, got rejected by a range of publishers, and I remember, I was thinking about it today, I remember very much the five or six responses. One said it was too highbrow, one said it was too lowbrow, one said it was too sort of lighthearted, one it was too, too serious and historical, one said it was too personal, one said it wasn't personal enough, but it was the real, real story, you know. Mm -hmm. And I sort of, what I took away from that is publishers like to put writers into boxes. Mm -hmm. You know, that they, they have this very segmented view of the market, different bits of the market, what different kinds of narrative. Those publishers each thought of my book, book potentially going into one of those boxes and it didn't quite fit because it was, it was a particular shaped book. I'm not saying it was perfect, but it was a particular shape and the boxes weren't right. Um, and I think that's kind of, in a way, what we're talking about here. I remember we had a round table a few weeks ago and we began to tap up some of these issues. And we heard some really, you know, quite alarming stories about a young black guy from Hackney who wanted to write science fiction. And a creative writing tutor and told him, no, 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 that's not actually what the market wants from you. The market wants the stories about gangs, crime, guns, or riots. Sorry, sorry to break in there, but, yeah. but actually what he said was that if he, if he produced that science fiction book, he would be marked down. Oh, that's right. He would be, yeah. actually be marked down for producing that book, and he should produce a, a gangster uh, yeah. set in Hackney. That's yeah. actually, that's and, that, and that was actually you know, a published author. Yeah. 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 Which I mean, so makes it worse in a way. But, I mean, I think my understanding of it, he was doing that on the basis of his understanding of what a publisher would say that he was meant to be judging the of marketability. Mm -hmm. um, and we heard other stories in a sort of similar yeah. vein, and that really did alarm me. And I did think there is a free speech. There is potentially a free speech issue there. So I think we all face these barriers, whatever colour we are, whatever gender we are, trying to get published. There are expectations. But when they coalesce around race in that way, there is something quite distorting and quite unpleasant about it. And I think maybe whether that's a 
you know, a black author setting out to write a book in a genre that a publisher deems to be a white genre, or whether it's even a white author trying to write a kind of book about a black experience that the publisher says, you know what, the name we want to attach. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I would like actually uh, just like to respond to that by saying, you know, when, when, when uh, there is a problem when there's a, you have a, a, a white author uh, trying to write on a black subject, but the difference is, is that most of the time that is welcome. You know, that in, in, like, in the, you know, using the example of pitching English, you know, that would work and that you have someone being on a six figure advance for something that a black, if a black writer wrote it, he's told it's not marketable. And also, there's a, 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 a wealth of other writers from his background who are doing very well writing all sorts of other books in all sorts of other genres. And we can't remotely say we see that, you know, in, in black writing, in black literature as a whole, you can't, you just can't, you know, there is no, uh, there is no sci-fi, as far as we know, coming out of the UK, there is no romance, you know, there is, there's very, you know, uh, few literary black British novelists, and I think, I would say that the talent, it's not that the talent isn't out there, you know, there are people are out there, they're writing these books, they're submitting these books, uh, but, but uh, the people who would represent and champion those books are, uh, uh, and not being accepted in the way that they should, basically. You know, they're not being allowed into the industry in the way that they should. I mean, the thing is that I sort of point out, uh, Jonathan, or put to you about the fact that some of possibly your comments could be seen being based on the assumption there's a level playing field. And the fact that there is, you know, and all the research has shown, that anecdotal or otherwise, that there's a hierarchy of discrimination, uh, either explicit or implicit. So when you think about the relevance, because obviously in terms of you know, the event between post English pen and about the fact that a lot of the writers that you represent are international writers. And so the concept of what free speech is and human rights is could be seen as something that is not relevant to domestic writers, so, you know, black British writers. I mean, is that something that you think is... No, I think that's why we're having the debate, because so I think it may well be relevant. So that's why I really want to explore this evening. And when, when, when we think about free speech at Penn, we think about not just the sort of basic legal rights, but the question do people actually have the ability to exercise the rights. So in this country, we may have the universal right to freedom of expression. There's, there's various laws in place around that, and at Penn, we sometimes campaign to change those laws, like libel, the way that libel impacts on writers. We've got a big campaign to try to reform that we've been running a big campaign which has had some success around visas and the impact of visa restrictions on visiting visitors. <coughs> we don't get to read some of those great international writers that might even come to the country. But at the same time, we do a lot of work um, with uh, people who are, for some reason, aren't able to get their voices heard, whatever story it is that they might want to tell. That might be because they're in prison, might be because they're coming from a refugee background, they're, they're seeking asylum, they're immigration detainees. For some reason, they lack the confidence, the means, the skills, the language to express themselves. We're not, we're not going to them and saying, we want to hear a particular story from you. It's not, you know, you've been around in science, we want to hear about your experience of leaving Iraq. We're just saying, you know, we think you might enjoy writing. We're going to put you in with a writer for a few weeks, do an intensive workshop. Rather like you might get a few to our one, we do it over a long time frame, and we go to you. We do it in a space where you're safe and comfortable and feel that you can you can try things out. Um, and that's not because there's a, a censorship at work or some sort of top-down state kind of prohibition on these people expressing themselves, but there are all sorts of more subtle cultural, social, economic forces that may be acting as barriers. So I think I see that our role is to go in and try to identify those barriers and where we can lift them and give people the means, the capability that they need to really meaningfully have the right to free expression so it's not just like a piece of paper. What do you think? I mean, you know, Johnson's talking about some of those subtle hidden barriers. I mean, mm. the, the, for a lot of black writers, they're not subtle, they're not hidden. No. So, what would you say? In my mind, it's just that it's about it's about the communication. You know, there, there, there's been, and it's about like the fact that there's very simple things that can be done in order to make things better, and they were outlined in the wonderful color report. Uh, black writers have been talking about this for many, many years, uh, and it's just about actually people having the will to do what needs to be done. That's, all, that's it, really. Uh, um, I'm sure you can, you know, as we go on through the night, we can talk about what those things are, but it's, it's very simple. And it is, you know, just as easy as just allowing people 
uh, the space to uh, write and, and say what they would like. And that definitely isn't happening uh, in, in, in the way things are right now uh, and in the climate that we have now. Um, I, I think it's interesting for us as, as black British writers to sit here and to uh, be aware of English pain and to uh, look at the work that's being done abroad and then try and say to ourselves, well, is there an equivalent for us here? You know, uh, if we want to talk about, say, the shooting of Mark Duggan, you know, uh, will, we be, will we be given an equal voice to say what we want? I think if anyone was watching, you know, the media, uh, you know, around the time of the riots and, and see what happened to uh, Darkest House, see what happened to Gus John, we would say that, no, we're not given that equal voice. Voice, you know, we are we are shut down, and and you know, uh, I think writers uh, face an enormous challenge, you know, because we want to uh, be able to live, we want to be able to eat, and you know, we want to be able to uh, share our art with people. But if you've got to watch what you're saying all the time, that goes against the very notion of the job that you're actually doing. You know, it goes against the very notion of expressing yourself, and I think. You know, all what ha needs to happen is that there needs to be greater communication. Uh, people need to listen to what uh, we have to say and, and respond accordingly. I'm quite interested for bringing in the audience because I've, I've spoken to some people who were at the Arts Council 10, 20 years ago when people began trying to work on the issue, particularly about getting more black publishers into the industry. And, they're, and they're, 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 they were quite sad that we were sort of needing to keep having the debate, but they recognised that we do need to keep having the debate. And there's initiatives. Don't well, see. Why do you think that well, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm interested if you've got a sort of view on what's going on with those various initiatives over the years. Well, the thing is that initiatives, I mean, you know, some of them are directing, some of them are coming in all of a sudden hijacked. Yeah, sure. But when you think about the fact that, um, you know, with everything, if you look what's happening in Syria, if you look at what's happening with the Arab Spring, the only way any rule change happens is the rule has to be there. Okay, it's not the, the cliche, but lip service. And then also, for example, we think about Equal Colour since 2004 to now, has the profile of the industry changed? Because we're the best in the world, if you've got an industry that's populated by men, it's highly unlikely, unless they are, you know, in a recent lifetime, they were, a very, very recent lifetime, they were a woman, for them to be able to relate to the needs of women from all different racial backgrounds and also in terms of class. Um, so if the industry isn't changing, the problems are not going to change. The initiative in isolation is not going to make a difference. So what I want to do is just bring back to you, like I said before, we, we open up to the floor a bit more, but I think there's some other things where there is evidence coming out. So when you think about um, Alex Wheaton's uh, piece in the, in the uh, Independent in October last year <coughs> about um, the Booker Prize um, and you know, who were featured on, on, on that, um, and also in relation to the sort of stories that are coming out and being published and being allowed to be published. So when you think about English pen and its role around the fact that you're defending the freedom to write, mm -hmm. and obviously within that it's not just writing, people need to read it, so exactly. it's being published. Yeah. So if you put that within the British context <coughs> and look at who's being published and being allowed to publish and whose voices are being allowed to be expressed, would then so and relating that for example in this context of this debate, black British writers, what then would you say English pen could do or flag up in relation to that. Could I, could I add an addition? Could I say? It's even more complex than that, actually. It's okay. Then, after people have been published and after they won awards and after they've won a thing and they're doing really well, if they're still finding it difficult to get into the industry, what can English people do to? Um, help that from the satellite because that, that is the nature of my experience and when I talk to my peers, all of whom you know, have been published and had careers or in the midst of having careers, uh, we, 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 we come against the same problem. Even the biggest, most prominent black writers admit that there is a problem with this. So, so how do we alleviate this situation? Well, I suppose what, 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 what I'm hearing is that most of the problem is actually around the makeup of the publishing industry. And that's, as we said, that's what was identified by 20 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago. It's, it's been rooted, it's not news, and yet something hasn't changed. I suspect that class is a big part of that as well. We all know it's not just a, a white industry, it's a very middle class industry. Access to the industry is very limited. It's, you know, unpaid internships are a 
life as a way of starting in the industry. It's a shame there aren't more publishers here. I think for publishers to be here hearing these arguments would make a big difference. And I think English Pen may have a role to play there in facilitating those sorts of encounters and letting publishers actually hear what it feels like to be knocking on the door and to be sort of turned away for reasons which may on the face of it not be about race but which may cumulatively start to look like it's a race. Um, so, in relation to some of the programs that you actually run currently, mm -hmm. so for example, because the, the, you know, we did our own survey um, and uh, it was clear that out of uh, the, the, the writers who responded, it was black British writers and, and wanted to get some sense of their, how they saw English pen and whether or not they were aware of you. And a lot of the, the, the writers were unaware of how you could benefit them, and that's exactly what you did outside of the international landscape. So in terms of the perception issue, mm. what then do you think needs to be done? Well, we need to do events like this, and, 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 and we are, so that's a step, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> So, yeah. what, do you, what do you think is your here and you, the yeah. whole thing is about how PEN possibly could work more uh, yeah. directly with Black British writers? I, I wrote a, f a few words uh, on this and, and to be honest with you, uh, how, I, how I feel about it is that we need to actually like, stop having these type of debates. <laughs> okay, I think that, that would be a start. That actually, I, 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 I am actually, the reason why I'm feeling a little bit itchy, I don't know if I look at you, it's a little bit, is because today is World Book Day. Today is World Book Day, and I'm sitting here talking about being marginalised. I am not happy about that. I am, I'm totally not happy about that. And I think the first thing that needs to change is that instead of me being at an event talking about being marginalised, I should actually be reading, promoting my work, I should be engaging with audiences on the World Book Day. Not, well, not, 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 but, I'm, I'm not, I am definitely not promoting my work now. I, do not, I would not promote my work in a situation like this. It's too serious for me to be promoting my work here today. Um, that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to talk about this uh, because um, very few people are. So, um, no, definitely that promotion is not what I'm, what I'm about here. But I would like to be in the future. I think what we need is actually more action. I think we need to be implementing the inclusion that we keep saying needs to be done. That's what I think needs to happen. So, we need to have black writers at festivals. We need to have black writers in schools and universities. We need to have black writers being promoted uh, through the book schools, as well as everybody else as well. I'm not saying that, 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 that in a way, I'm not saying that, that we're a special case. I actually feel, uh, as a reader and as a writer, I want to engage with everybody. I want to read everybody. I don't care where my literature comes from. I don't care. But I'm afraid that the feeling does not seem to be shared by the industry, because when I look around, predominantly, I see uh, certain stories being told. 